What's going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another Copart walk around over here at Yard 18, 2829 Southeast 15th Street in Dell City, Oklahoma. I'd like to welcome y'all back to another walk around video. And boy, we're gonna start this one off with a really interesting car, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, big shout out Copart Corporate Office to the people here at Yard 18 for my beautiful fiance for helping me do all this out here in this nasty, sticky, humid, hot weather. Now let's jump right into it. Number one on my list, I told you, a really cool car, a 2005 Chevrolet Cobalt with 250,000 miles. I don't think I've ever seen a Cobalt with 250,000 miles before. This is a donation. It's listed as a run and drive. Body work, bad body work. Goodness, I'm, I'm, I'm quite honestly surprised. It really doesn't look bad for a quarter of a million mile Cobalt. Keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, this is like, this was nothing, nothing against anybody that owns a Cobalt. I've had several of them. Um, they're good cars. But when they are manufactured, they're actually built kind of as disposable cars. They're meant to be used, and then, you know, you get rid of them. That's what most people do. They're great little commuter cars, but to see one with a quarter of a million miles on it that still looks to be in pretty good condition, and it still says it runs, I'm impressed. I am. I, I'll give it to whoever owned this car. They, uh, while they, well, ooh, okay. Uh, you know, wow, <laughs> the smell. Ooh, where's my sniffometer? Uh, truthfully, I don't really want to sit in there, but good lord, this this one is nasty. This this is a very nasty car. Oh lord, that's a rod knock. <laughs> Yeah, I know what that is. That is a rod knock. Hold on, maybe not. Maybe it's a uh, the tensioner pulley. That might be the tensioner pulley. Let's have a closer look. It sounds like a rod knock, but if the tensioner pulley is going out on it, Well, we've got a lot of grease all over the place down here. All over the alternator, there's grease and oil everywhere. Man. Hey, I don't know. I don't know. We're going to shut it off, though. I don't like that at all. Now, was I considering this one? Yes, I was. I was considering it. Even at a quarter million miles, if it runs and drives and we get the air conditioning working in it, we can sell it. But that, that's, uh, unfortunately, I can't really see too far down here on this motor. Uh, there's so many things it could be. It could be a, a water pump bearing going bad, alternator bearing going bad. It could be the harmonic balancer going bad. It could be an idler attentioner pulley going bad. Or, alternatively, it could, it could be a rod knock. <laughs> And I'm sorry, but for me, that's just too much of a risk. Too risky. There's metal. Nope, there's metal. I can see shiny metal particulates. Yeah, that's that's a rod knock. So you take the dipstick out and you sit it on a clean surface. See if I can get out of the sun here, man. It's hard to do. Well, you probably aren't going to be able to see, but inside this oil here that I just put down, there are actually metal flakes, lots of them, lots of metal flakes. So when you got metal flakes in your motor, hang it up, moving on. Number two is an 07 Lexus IS250. Yes, we are looking at this one as well. I don't even know if we're gonna get anything at this auction, man, I really don't, but I'm, I'm looking for something, but I'm not just gonna buy anything. I gotta find something that feels right. I get a feeling about cars, you know what I mean? And I want something that feels right. Now this is, it's an older Lexus. It's got 150,000 miles. This is a hail car, but it really doesn't look that bad. Like this is a hail car that I could live with. You know, it's definitely got a lot of hail dings. I don't know why this is circled, but there's like 20 more that aren't. Lots of them that aren't circled and a few of them that are. And maybe it was given a car wash or something. But other than that, and being this pearlescent white, you know, it really... It really helps you to avoid seeing 
the hail damage. And the body itself is nice. The car looks really nice. 150,000 miles, a little concerning. But again, it's a Toyota. I'm sorry, it's a Lexus, my bad. Toyota, Lexus, whatever. Push to start. Oh, come on. Don't be a damn tease now. Hold on, let's turn all this off. But the car smells kind of funky. I'll, I'll tell you that right now. Okay, she ain't gonna start. She ain't gonna start. Dagnam it. That really sucks. What are these leather pouches? That's a little weird. I mean, overall, though, it's a nice looking car. It really is. I don't remember what the price is currently on it. It doesn't really matter, I guess, because the price is going to change the auctions tomorrow. Oh, I love it. I love it. Love the plastic, man. So much plastic that you can't see anything under the hood. It makes it a lot easier to sell, doesn't it? Leaking valve covers. Don't worry about it. You can't see them. Leaking water pump. Don't worry about it. You can't see it. Condition of the serpentine belt. Don't worry about it. You can't see it. If you can't see it, it's not a problem. <laughs> you really can't see anything on this car. Look, they're nice enough to give you an oil dipstick, and that is it. And the oil's a little low, and it's a little brown, but not too, not too bad. You can see this, this battery, though. Here, here's something, ladies and gentlemen, that I look for. I look at a lot of things on looking at cars, but this is just another one. You see how this battery right here, it's old and corroded, but that's a Lexus battery, all right? And let me tell you something, that battery didn't last uh, 12 years, all right? That is not a 12-year-old battery. Batteries generally last you five, six, seven years. Uh, no, that is not an original battery. So somebody went back to Lexus just to get the battery replaced. So I bet a Carfax report on this will show quite a bit of dealer service history. Big selling point when you're about to flip your car. Big selling point. You pull that Carfax report, you got that dealer maintenance history on it, and you got a clean car like this, you can explain, yes, it's a rebuilt title from hail damage. It's, you're not hiding anything. You know what I mean? You can look at the car and show the customer, here's the hail damage. This is it. And that's all there is to it. Nothing hidden. No hidden body work. No hidden accident damage. It's literally some dings around the top of the car other than that it's a reliable vehicle this is one i'm watching number three is a 2014 infinity q50 so this is one i was actually looking at and considering and now that i'm here in person and i can see the extent of the damage yeah i'm thinking probably not although although i will admit this doesn't look like it's that bad it doesn't this piece right here has been damaged the frame rail though it's nice and straight you can clearly see that but this piece right here has been crumpled it doesn't look like it's that difficult to take off you need to remove the radiator and stuff it but you're going to do that anyway and this is one of those things like we did on the z where you drill out the spot welds and you just replace this whole piece which goes how far does it go that's the question okay so it just goes right here it's meshed in between these pieces this i would not replace no way in hell i'm replacing that not over this little bend i'd hammer that back out replace this section right here and you're good to go but the radiator is damaged so you're gonna need to replace the radiator obviously the condenser is missing in action so that's got to be there's a lot of pieces missing a lot and uh look at this it's gonna cost some money so in this instance you can understand why the car was totaled man i hate that they put the the, the parts in there like that, man, my God. <sighs> There's scratches and scuffs all down it as well. Oh, man. <sighs> wow. Well, <laughs> uh, looks like one of the headlights is here. So that'll save you a few bucks. Carefully close this door. My goodness, they loaded this car up. So, I mean, it does come with quite a few parts. You can't get the trunk open. I'd be willing to bet there's parts in there, too. I still think this car is just going to cost way too much. Way too much. So we're going to move on. Number four on the list is a 2017 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. Why is this here? It's not hail damage. Look at the paint. Isn't that just gorgeous? This is an unlimited edition, 22,000 miles. So it's got some scrapes and scratches. Like, if you have a Jeep 
and you go off-roading. I mean, this is why I wouldn't buy a brand new Jeep. I would not buy a brand new or a new-ish Jeep to go out and play in the mud or to play in the wilderness. Not gonna happen because I'm not gonna risk damaging something this expensive. These things are not cheap. Now, if you're wondering why it's here, take a look at the passenger side here and, and here you go. Now, would I buy this Jeep and take it out mudding? Absolutely, absolutely. It's already lost value. It's depreciated some. Plus now we've got the salvage history. Yes, this would be perfect to buy as a play toy. I mean, the door is no big deal. I wouldn't even, like seriously, I don't think I'd even care. <laughs> I really don't. That little rocker damage down there, obviously that needs to be fixed. Looks like there was a running board down there that's messed up, uh, a scrape down here. You know, there's a lot, a lot of this stuff you're not going to fix because you don't care. And I wouldn't fix it either. Oh man, it's full of water. Dang. That sucks. That sucks. Well, you can see where it's been creased down here in, in the, the interior of the car here. So, I mean, at least with something like this, you can clearly see where the damage is. You know what needs to be done. Honestly, it is a really nice Jeep. Really nice Jeep. We got arrows pointing in here from the A-pillar towards the dash. Maybe the A-pillar took a little bit of damage too. Oh, crap. Yeah. Oh, look at that. I'm just going to have to leave it like that. That's why there's water in it, I guess. Let's take a look under the hood here come on get down it's hard doing this stuff one-handed guys but they got a dang safety mechanism under here as well along with the clips come on well she's a nice looking motor with a nice aftermarket intake very clean. What size engine is this? It's the 3.6 liter. Okay. So it's the 3.6 that they put in just about every Jeep. I mean, with 20,000 miles on the clock, there shouldn't really be much of anything to worry about. I'm going to go ahead and lock this down because we get some nasty winds out here in Oklahoma, guys, and they'll take a hood clean off. So aside from the damage on the other side, the rest of the Jeep looks to be in pretty good condition. Be careful with this door here. It looks like this one will fire up too. Is it push to start? No, it is not. We actually have a key. Oh, did you hear that lifter tap? Well, once you get past the lifter tap, steering wheel is straight, AC is cold, Alpine stereo. That exhaust looks aftermarket, don't it? I don't know. I think it does. And she runs good. She runs real good. We got an airbag light on. Oh, I just want to sit in this air conditioning. It feels so good. All right. Let's shut her down and move on to the next one. Number five is an 06 Escape. And yes, I was actually looking at this, but again, it comes down to the pictures versus reality, man. You gotta come out here and look at it for yourself and, and make an assessment, you know, based on your own skills and abilities and whether it's worth it for you or not. So I'm looking at everything here and the gaps on the hood are just ridiculous. Like you can stick your whole hand down in there and the hood's been up here. So obviously I would trash the hood and the hood even, you have to look at it just the right angle. There's a crease right here. I don't know if you can even see that. We got a crease in the hood. So the hood's buckled. This hood needs to go. Um, the fender, though, looks pretty good. The gaps are off. The gaps are tight here, and they get loose as you come up here towards the A-pillar. Eh, not overly concerned with that. I don't think that's a deal breaker for me. But the hood's got to go. Hood hinges have to go up the core support. Core support is definitely bent and damaged inward. I hicked up, excuse me. Looks like the condenser survived, maybe? The radiator? No, it looks like the radiator. Well, maybe it did. Maybe it did. No, it doesn't look like there's any coolant in there. Yes, no, maybe so. I don't know. This, honestly, I think we would pass on this one. I mean, without even going any further into it. 
I haven't seen the interior or anything either. Just it, it doesn't look like it was well cared for at all. It's got 141,000 miles on the clock. We've got uh, Bridgestones on the back over here. Then we got Ling Long. Are you kidding me? Ling Long? Ling Long. Okay, we have a, a Ling Long tire on the front. I, I've never heard of that one before. We've got a Michelin over here. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, I've seen it. There's another buckle up here as well that I didn't see a minute ago. Oh, it smells. No, we're not even, we're not, no, nope, nope done here we got a 2016 mercedes-benz cla 250 yeah yeah i don't know uh personally i don't really like the body style all that much and what's interesting is it's listed as hail damage which it definitely has hail damage but i noticed the front bumper is uh it's definitely tore up it took a hit um right here and definitely right here and something broke this bottom portion of the bumper so I don't really know how that happened. Um, it's not listed as, a, as an accident. It's listed as hail, and it's definitely got plenty of hail. See how well this comes out on camera. White is really hard to see, guys, especially on camera. But this thing is riddled with hail damage. Tons of it. Hopefully that comes out on video. I really can't tell. The rest of the car looks questionable, very questionable. Um, this color is kind of like a beige, a cream type white. You move over here to the quarter panel, that's a completely different color. The uh, color between this and this is way off. I don't know if you can see that on camera or not, but this is a darker white. This is a bright white, like a diamond white versus a, a I don't know. It was a certified car though. Okay, maybe I do kind of like the body style. I guess. I think it's something that, that would grow on me. 64,000 miles, but man, it's just, there's so much hail damage. So much hail damage. This is one that really took a beating. And then that front bumper, I'm sure that ain't going to be cheap. It says it starts to drives. And it does. It fired right up. There's no warning lights at all. Oh man, it's air conditioning, right? air conditioned why we got let's turn this down man 75 heck no we need like 40 40 degrees would be good for me there we go get some of that air conditioning ac works it obviously isn't low on coolant so it doesn't look like there's really any damage beyond the bumper i guess the next question is how in the heck do you shift the dang thing i see paddle shifters the seat doesn't want to move oh <laughs> it helped i'm using yeah don't get me around a mercedes i don't know what the heck i'm doing but where do you shift it is this a shifter no that's not a shifter oh oh okay okay it's like the 2018 c300 that i drove yeah yeah gotcha transmission not in park no kidding neutral reverse and then park Bingo. Let's pop the hood and take a look at what we're working with under here. Ugh, they hide the dang hood release under there. It's like they don't want you to open the hood, you know? They don't expect you to do that for yourself. Not that there's probably much of anything under here serviceable anymore by an individual. Okay, well, it is what it is. Number seven is a 2015 Toyota Camry. You may recognize this because we've done this one before, but there's a reason we're coming back to talk about it again because it's still here. That's right, it's still here. And this time something changed. So this car has been here for, I don't know, two or three auctions now, I can't remember. It's hail damage. It's got like 110,000 miles on lots of little bitty hail dings. I could live with those. I can absolutely live with those. It's, it's, it's pretty rough, it is. But it's not so bad that I would be embarrassed to drive this car now it looks like this car had a little accident since the last time we were here this wasn't like this yeah this wasn't busted this bumper wasn't crunched so something happened dang that does suck 
that does suck. That's uh, that's some that's some pretty good damage right there. Oh, the trunk has been bent as well. The uh, trunk is not lining up anymore. We look at this gap right here, man. Yeah, here's another piece of it on the ground right here, right there, sitting on the ground. Yeah, this whole trunk is uh, has been moved. I would guess it damaged the hinge or something under there. Or something under here has been damaged. This was not like this. That really sucks. I hate to say that that alone would cause me to change my mind about buying it, but it absolutely does. Absolutely does. I was going to look at uh, potentially buying it. And obviously, this would be a great flip for the lot. This is a car that would sell. Hail damage, absolutely. Somebody will buy it. It runs good. Last time we were here, we were able to fire it up with no problems. And it fires right up again. Got the touch screen. We already know it's got cold air conditioning. I do want to pop that trunk. I want to see just how bad this... Uh, uh, looks like it may already be popped or it's not working there it goes it popped okay let's see if we can look under here and see if there's anything visually out of whack here doesn't look like it i mean this damage isn't is it's not horrible it just sucks because this wasn't like that and that's just something else you know what's one thing when you got hail damage and it's like, all right, people will get past that. But now you've got a, you've got paint missing, a deep gash in the bumper. The trunk isn't lined up all the way. This trim piece is broken. Um, yeah. Yeah, something is just way out of whack on that side. Dang it. And it's not out of the question, but for the money that it's probably going to go for, I don't know. I don't know if it's something I would be interested in or not. Get back in here. I mean, there's no check engine light. We had the tire light on, but it's got a flat. If I remember correctly, there's a low tire or a flat back there. So I don't know how well this comes out on camera, but this is this car right here. And as you can see, there was no damage to that rear piece, no damage to the bumper at all when it was checked into Copart. So that definitely happened here. And, uh, it's just worth noticing things like that. You know what I mean? Another reason, ladies and gentlemen, to come check these cars out for yourself. Accidents happen. They happen out here. I'm not saying that someone at Copart did it. It could have been someone that was walking by. Someone may have had a tool. Someone may have bumped into it. I Well, okay, someone didn't, someone didn't bump into that. But it's also, in fact, I can tell you exactly what happened. This happened. Another good reason to come check these out for yourself. Because remember, you're buying them as is so you know that damage may not have been there in the pictures but it's there now and once you take this car out of this building here or out of this lot you own it so worth looking into i'm gonna keep my eye on it i i, I don't know i know what uh, i know that it went for 5500 last week and they didn't sell it but i also know that it's sitting at 1150 right now auctions tomorrow and uh, it's now a pure sale. So this went from a, uh, a reserve to now it's a pure sale at $1,100. So it may go cheaper. It may go for more. I don't know. But this is another one that I'm definitely keeping my eye on. I got to pick one. One out of the whole lot of cars we're looking at this week. One that I really think is the best deal. And I'm going to try to bid on it. We'll see what happens. This one is on the list depending on the price, of course. Number eight. I really like this one and i've been saying that a lot but I, I, I love cars guys i really do i love cars i don't care what it is i just love cars number eight 2012 hyundai genesis coupe now i love it and i hate it i don't like the 2.0 turbo i'm sorry i know there's plenty of you out there that love it i love that 3.8 i test drove a 3.8 a year and a half two years ago and i almost bought the damn thing i loved it it was a six speed stick and man that thing would move it was such a quick torquey car now this one obviously needs some rebuild work now how bad is it i don't know i haven't looked at it yet obviously we've got an issue with this wheel this wheel is bent in we've got camber you can see the marks all over the wheel you can see that this uh 
this portion that comes off the fender apron here and runs down over here to the frame rail. This has definitely been bent and it's, you can see where the seam sealer is cracked back there and it's literally just, it's just busted. Uh, yeah. Man. Yeah, it didn't look as bad in the pictures, of course, because you know, you're not gonna get down here and actually take a look at all this. Now the core support actually doesn't look too bad. It's definitely a little bit misshapen. It's all plastic. Yeah, man, this this doesn't look, and the air box is in the way, so it's really hard to get down in there and get a better look. I mean, obviously the frame rail straight. We don't have any, we don't have any frame damage or anything. Oh man, the tie rod is completely broken and hanging on the ground there. So, uh, I'm looking to see if the control arm here looks damaged. And I don't know about you, but I, from where I'm at, from my position, I don't see any damage to the control arm. So it could be that the strut is bent or the strut tower could be bent, but I feel like that's pretty unlikely. This doesn't look like it was a severe collision. This really looks like a, uh, really looks like a fender bender. Looks like we got to pop the hood here. I figured it didn't have a uh, hood latch anymore. So this one will need some work. Oh, the front bumper comes with it. Does it come with the headlights too? Oh, that would be nice, wouldn't it? I don't see any headlights at all in this car. Dang it. But on the plus side, they did give us some, these clips. Man, these clips can be expensive. The dealer charges like three bucks a piece for those. I don't see any lights in the car, so I'm not sure that we're gonna be able to fire it up. Sucks, it's an automatic, that sucks too. This car has been sitting a long time, folks. The uh, date on the sticker is from about a year and a half ago. So she has been sitting a long time. And that's one of the things I don't like. I don't like cars that have been sitting. You don't know what other issues have developed. But also, my main concern is the gasoline going bad. A lot of people use ethanol. In a lot of places, there's nothing other than ethanol available. So, ethanol gas tends to break down. So what I'm looking for is around the strut tower to see if it's been misshapen, been out of shape. I'm looking for any of these spot welds that may have been knocked out. I'm looking for any places where the metal is uh, spot welded on, where it's deformed where there's seam sealer all around here. Has any of that come off? Has it been cracked or, or misshapen? And it doesn't look like it. So I'm gonna say the strut tower is fine. The fender apron is fine. She needs a fender. This piece, although the right way to do it would be to replace it. And I'm not even sure how hard that is. It looks like it meshes somewhere in here. It's spot welded right here, right here. So this inner piece looks like it could come out I'm going to guess, yeah, there's spot welds all in here. So it looks like this piece is layered in here. So this outside piece comes off. You just have to sand all this down, get to the spot welds, drill the spot welds out. Or alternatively, you could put, the, you could, you could reshape this. I'm 100% certain this could be popped out, reshaped, put some seam sealer back on it, probably be fine. Uh, that's something to talk to the body expert, Mike, about. Um, he would have more input on that. You guys can comment below what you think. I, obviously, I'm not a body guy. I'm just giving you my ideas off the top of my head. This does not look that bad. And since the frame rail is not affected, upper core support is fine. Um, or is this all one piece? I think Todd over there at uh, Unwrecked, he's done one of these. It looks like this whole core support here is one piece. So looks like we'd have to replace this, but no big deal. The crash bar is fine. Frame rail is fine. This is going to be cosmetic. The fender apron is fine. This is not going to put anybody in any danger, you know, in an accident. We're not going to put anybody's lives at risk here. Um, so I'm going to guess the strut must be bent or there's something I'm missing on the control arm down there that I just don't see. Got some damage to the uh, front of the rocker here. Nothing, uh, Nothing too terribly bad though. I'm probably spending too much time on this, but I actually really like it. I wish it was a stick. If it was a stick, I, I would be on this car all day. That doesn't sound right at all, does it? But I, <laughs> I would be on this car all day long. 
All right, yeah, the rest of the car looks good. The tires look good. The body looks good. Interior looks good. Low mileage. This is a decent car. Um, do we have a remote trunk release or is it an electronic one? Yeah, and she's dead as a door now because she's been sitting. Okay, so this is one to consider. It's something to think about. I think this could be a fairly easy rebuild, and I think it'd be fairly cheap too. So we're going to keep our eyes on it. And uh, you guys comment below. Tell me what you think of the uh, Genesis Coupe. Number nine, a 2015 Kia Forte sedan. I know, I know you guys are always like, why do you look at these Kias and Hyundais? Man, because parts are cheap, ladies and gentlemen. These are easy cars to work on. They're easy to work on. They're easy to sell. They're reliable. You can sell one of these knowing that it's probably going to be a good car for the person you sell it to. And to me, that actually means something. Now, this is a theft recovery. I, I just I had to come look at it in person because it is a newer car. It's a 15. I mean, granted, it's not new, new, but it's newer. It's only got 55,000 miles on the clock. What I didn't see in the pictures is whatever happened here. Like I said, theft recovery, so you know whoever stole it drove it like they stole it. Yeah, so that rim is obviously trash, and that makes you wonder if there's any other damage lurking under here, and that's something that you really want to find out. Oh, folks, you tell me. I know it's hard to see under here, but... Does that axle look damaged to you? It's so hard to see back here. Maybe not. May just be because it's sitting on a flat, but this axle just looks... Looks like it's a little rough on this side. I guess I'll have to watch the footage to be able to tell for sure. That's a good reason to get yourself a GoPro. Get yourself a GoPro. You can get underneath these things. Oh, look. I love it when people do this, man. They rip off the antenna, right? Because... I, I seriously doubt this car has blue link. Maybe it does. But ripping off the antenna is, is not a guaranteed way of not tracking the car, guys. That's... <laughs> I mean, it definitely helps, but that's not going to guarantee you won't find the car. So this is... This is a little rough. <sighs> Frame rail. How's she looking over here? Frame rail's good. That extra crash bar piece behind the frame... Or in front of the frame rail. Doesn't look like it was tweaked at all. Obviously, headlight, this core support, it's all plastic. It's trash. Fender's trashed. The hood is trashed. But again, like I said, these are not super expensive parts. Oh, wow. Okay. Boy, she smells funky. She smells real funky. Whew. Whew. Oh, my God. Maybe Mike let me hold on that ozone machine a little bit longer. We got a relay sitting back here. Looks like somebody may have pulled a relay. I don't know who would have done that. The interior is disgusting. This is just disgusting. This is going to need a lot of cleaning. A lot of cleaning. No oil change sticker. No rear view mirror. Oh, the rear view mirror is on the floor. Looks like they ripped it off for some reason. Oh, oh man. Look at all the mold. Can you see that? That's literally just, just mold everywhere. That is a door now. I'm liking this car less and less. Sometimes you just get a feeling about a car. I just, I don't have a good feeling about this and I don't think this is gonna be a difficult rebuild. Everything under here so far looks okay. It is listed as a run and drive. So, fender apron goes down under here. Fender apron actually looks fine. All the metal under here that goes to the fender well looks fine. It really looks like it's mostly just this side over here. The core support, the fender itself, and the headlight, the bumper, the hood. And it's all going to cost a little bit of money. You can find these parts used, guys. The oil. Oil's decent. The car is just nasty. I mean, it's nasty. Huh, no coolant. No, no coolant at all. How about that? Why would there be no coolant? Because the radiator looks fine and everything under there looks fine. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna say, after quickly reviewing this car, walk away, walk away, walk away.
Number 10, last but not least, last week I had a lot of you asking me to show you this car. Now I'm going to be the first to admit I don't know what the heck it is. I don't even know how to pronounce it, so forgive me for screwing it up. It's a 2018 Alfa Romeo Gila. And you guys really wanted to see this bad boy. 9,000 miles on the clock. Severe quarter damage over here. Looks like the back is actually okay. Q4, I don't know anything about this car. Nothing at all. You guys will have to comment below and tell me, are these, are these notorious for being good, solid, reliable cars? Or I kind of expect that this is going to be one of those uh, imported cars that's kind of uh, junk. <laughs> they, <laughs> you know, they don't, they don't last a whole long time. Oh, wow. All right, but the interior is, uh, interior is absolutely gorgeous. And I'm sure it's going to be dead, right? Let's see. Yeah. No, it seems to be working. We just have to find the button. Where, where's the push to start button? Oh, it's right here on the... Uh, so this is a run and drive. And it's dead. I tried. Okay, well, she's real, she's real ticked off right now. Let's just turn all this off. Man, 9,000 miles. This is a nice car. I mean, I, like I said, I don't know anything about it. But I like it, and I figured we'd do a quick run-through of it since so many of you wanted to see it last week, and we missed it. Oh, look at that. Water pouring everywhere. Nice. Well. Holy crap. Is this twin turbo? No. Single turbo? That's a four-banger. See, the engine cover makes it look like a six-cylinder. <laughs> it's dressed up because it looks like it's a six. But you got your intake over, or your exhaust over here. You got your intake over there. So it's a four-banger. Okay. All right. It's probably, I'm guessing, an all-wheel drive four-cylinder. Man, you guys are going to laugh at me over this. But comment below. You wanted to see it. There it is. I do admit, it is a very, uh, it's a very attractive car. Very attractive. Give you one more look at the interior here. Oh, the sniff test. I could breathe that in all day long, even though I know it's full of carcinogens. Oh, I love it. No ozone machine necessary. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be it for this walk around. Stay tuned. We got another one coming for you on Saturday. I want to give a big shout out again to Copart Corporate Office, to Copart out here in Oklahoma City, Yard 18, 2829 Southeast 15th Street. Be sure you come out here, check these cars out, check this place out. A bunch of good people here. Really do appreciate all of them for making this happen. And thank you to my fiance for coming out here and helping me keep all this organized. And uh, I think with that, whew. We're going to get out of here, guys, and I appreciate all of you. Don't forget, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. Follow me on Instagram, Auto Auction Rebuilds. Click that bell icon. Be sure you subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on the latest Copart walkarounds and purchases and flips. Until next time, I will catch you all very soon, and stay safe out there.